Is that supposed to be red, that light? Yeah. Yes. Good evening. My name is Shannon, and I'll be your moderator for this evening's class. And welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any other religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. This Oceanside branch was established in 1994. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you the Dean, Dr. Dennis Volpe, and the President, Dr. Carl Emler. <clears throat> In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. And the name of the Holy Spirit, manifested in or out of a physical body, is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our Creator has chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that in neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language are there any characters or letters in their alphabets which would produce the sound which is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings for the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Now, Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize Himself, because a cloud has no particular nor descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you how that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being. That is, having the shape and the form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time that he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. <clears throat> it is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel 
out of Egypt, he called Moses to top Mount Sinai and showed him this tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh later instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a cork round about. These three compartments making up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and the function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult sciences. <clears throat> Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to, de to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or the children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. Me? Okay. <laughs> I will uh, uh, we'll begin this evening with a prayer by myself, uh, followed by a um, scripture lesson, which will be taken from 2 Peter, the second chapter, and that will be read by Dr. Carl Emler. Let us bow our hearts and minds and thank our Heavenly Father for the opportunity to come to class tonight to have an opportunity that we, be, be, that we could be brought to a more profound knowledge and understanding of his eternal purpose, his pattern and his plan, and that he give us a heart to receive chastisement, but a heart that is able to believe and perceive the things of the Spirit. And we're thankful that um, for everyone who's been able to come out tonight for the visitors in the room uh, and for those out on YouTube. Um, it's a blessing that we can come together and hopefully be of one mind and one spirit that we can be reconciled in Yahshua the Messiah. And for all these things, let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> I'll be reading Second Peter, the second chapter, out of the King James Bible, um, substituting the correct names. But there were false prophets also among the people. In my mind, I wanted to read up a bit because <laughs> it's hard to start a chapter with but. <laughs> but we're going to do that for now. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying Yahshua, who bought them, and bring upon themselves swift, swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingers not, and their damnation slumbers not. 
For if Yahweh Elohim spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live unrighteously. And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. And Yahweh, knowing how to deliver the righteous out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished, but chiefly them who walk after the flesh, in the lust of uncleanliness, and despise government. Presumptuous they are, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, who are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before Yahweh. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are in blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, a heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking with a man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those who were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought into bondage. For if after they escape the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of Yahshua the Messiah our Savior, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse, worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them according to the true proverb, the dog has returned to his own vomit again and the sow that was washed to her wallow in the mire. That was Second Peter, the second chapter. Before calling on our first speaker, I have a quick announcement. Uh, for information about the Oceanside class or for questions arising from an Oceanside class broadcast lecture, please email us at Oceanside, Oceanside class IDMR at gmail.com or leave a voicemail or text message at 442-264-7388. Please limit your questions to items directly discussed during one of our lectures and include the class date and speaker with your question. Most questions will be answered at future classes. Also, uh, we would like to welcome our visiting branch school members. Uh, visiting with us from Springfield, Ohio, we have Drs. Frank and Valerie Lewis. Thank you for coming out and being with us tonight. Mm -hmm. And we will be having a two-speaker uh, format for class this evening, and our first speaker will be Dr. Valerie Lewis.
Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm happy and glad to be here. Um, it's been a while since I've been visiting out here, but <coughs> anyways, we're glad to be here at this point. And it's really a pleasure to be able to come to a place to learn, know, and understand something about our great creator of this universe, as he really is and actually exists, like it says in the first name. And that's what uh, we see these charts all around. And hopefully, there used to be a time in this great teaching where you'd travel, no matter where you went, and they, you, the, they'd have these charts, and they'd be all speaking the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like it says over in First, um, First Corinthians 1 and 10. And really what this, these charts are, are um, pictorial illustrations, and they're teaching tools, and this is really the vision drawn out. And we, we, we want to make it perfectly clear, if you listen to the moderation, it states that this is a school, not a church, and it uh, is established by through a divine vision and revelation given directly from the Creator himself to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley. And the thing is, he said, you know, he didn't say, you just believe me, I've been sent by God like some other people do. He said, you make me prove it to your satisfaction. Yeah. And there's not too many places that you can go to where it will be proven to your satisfaction. Right. And we've been encouraged to ask questions and get the thing understood. And if we don't understand it, don't teach it, mm -hmm. you know. And the thing is, we've been even instructed on what to have for witnesses and so on and so forth. And it's like I was raised Roman Catholic, and I was told that you can't learn anything about God until you die. Right. And we're down here telling you that's too late. Mm -hmm. That's why we're put on this earth plane is to learn something about the Creator. And this chart here, they call the green chart, it's really the creation imaged by His create. I mean the Creator, I'm sorry, imaged by His creation. And that's what we had this whole creation for. It's talking about the different parts of the physical body, and it's all going by the same tabernacle pattern. And you'll notice that there's a tabernacle pattern, which is a pattern of all things. Mm -hmm. And Elohim really here, as it states on this chart, Elohim is the archetype or the original pattern of the universe. And this is the days of creation, Moses' vision, days of creation coming in by this tabernacle pattern, which is a reflection of Yahweh Elohim himself. And it was shown to Moses in a vision and revelation. And that's why he was able to write the first five books of the Bible. And then he was also told to build this tabernacle exactly like he had seen it in the, in the vision. You can't be messing up. This is a pattern of all things. Right. And the thing is, you know, the master builders, you know, they came up from Egypt. They were down there building pharaohs, treasure cities, and so on and so forth. And when Moses came down and talked about this tabernacle pattern, like the master builders, that ain't going to stand. We know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You don't know. Now, Moses received it directly from the creator himself in a vision of revelation. Panoramic vision of Elohim to Moses. And this is a... Show, Mo, Yahweh Elohim instructed him to build it exactly like it he's seen in the, in the vision. Now, if he's going to listen to man, or if you're going to listen to Yahweh. Right. And if anybody realizes that this is a divine vision and revelation given to our founder directly from the Creator, they're not going to be playing with the things that we've learned since coming into this great teaching. Right. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I think people are just not aware, or we could be, maybe become so accustomed to just like adding our two cents into it. And it's really, we have to hold fast to the things that we have learned since coming into this great teaching and not get ourselves involved in it. And it's easy to say it's a lot harder to do. Because, uh, you know, and so uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, whoever has that, 1 Corinthians, 1 and 10, yeah. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Now he's saying, I beseech you. What does that mean? That means I'm begging you. You know, these are serious things that we're talking about down here. I beg you, brethren, by, our, by the coming of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, read. That you all speak the same thing. That you all speak the same thing. And where we're reading is after the cross. If you look at the dispensation and ages chart. And we didn't know anything about dispensations or ages, okay? But the thing is, we're learning about it down here now. And that's timing in Yahweh's purpose. And this is the three ages of time. And we're right down here at the end of it, where we are, where, where uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, the first chapter is being read, is at the beginning of the same age that we're living in. It is after Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection, and outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which actually started the age we're living in. You'll see that this is of the Garden of Eden down to the flood. And what happened at the end of this age? 
They had a vision of revelation directly from the creator. Noah did. And he was told to make an ark, a, a, a big boat, you know, because it was going to rain. It was going to flood. And, you know, they never even seen rain. It was uh, water the, from the mist coming out of the earth. Mm -hmm. So he's walking around talking about something that these folks never even seen. But nevertheless, he preached the same thing for 120 years. And the reason that the end of all flesh had come before Yahweh, as it states over there in Genesis, I think it's 5 and 6, it says that the, the uh, wickedness of man was great in the earth plain. And their heart, the imagination of the man's heart, was only evil continually. Right. I mean, that paints a pretty clear picture. Only evil continually. And if you turn on the news, there's a lot of evil going on there, on there out there in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, anyways, you know, sometimes I uh, tune, tune on the news and look at the different things that are going on in the world. Mainly, you know, I'll get the dishes done faster because it's like, oh, I can't believe that's happening. You know, I mean, it's like you just watch and it's like, wow, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, I mean, it's just like, it's okay to lie. It's okay to... You know, do whatever you want to do, and it's just, it's out, it's out of whack, it's out of, out of balance. And the thing is, people are just, you know, the imagination of their hearts is, is evil continually. And that's why Yahweh destroyed it back here. They had wicked imaginations, only evil continually. And they did, the ones that believed the report, or believed the vision of revelation that Noah had, they got in the ark. The ones that didn't believe were lost in the flood. And, you know, they were in that ark for seven days before it even started to rain. Right. And they're like, you mean you mean to tell me the sky is going to leak? <laughs> you know? I mean, it's like, you, yep. you know, we're talking about down here at the end of this age, it won't be water but fire this time. Right. You know, at the end of an age. And it's like, we've never seen something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, but we get little types and shadows like up north of California there. Paradise is burnt, you know. Right. And it's still continuing to go on. And the thing is, but we're talking about a vision of revelation that he had, preached it for 120 years. Those that believed got in the ark, those that didn't were lost in the flood. No one his family came over to this age, and this is where the old covenant was given to mankind. And you can just read the charts, they're user friendly. And it's like all the different events that happened in the third and fourth uh, dispensation, and the second, it's actually the second age of time, the third age, as far as the purpose. And so we're down here at the end of this age, after they received that old covenant that was given to the Jews and Jews only, back here at Mount Sinai, it was spoken down by Yahweh, and they said, all that Yahweh has said, we will do and be obedient. There was not a Gentile there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is like something, and then Yahshua comes in at the end of, end of this age here, and he fulfills all those all carnal ordinances back there that were given to the Jews. Because they couldn't do it, and you know what? You couldn't do it either. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we think, oh, well, maybe we should try, you know? <laughs> no. That's what the mystery of iniquity wants you to do. See, the thing is, Yahshua came in and said the Old Testament is fulfilled in Yahshua. It's brought to an end. It's All this is nailed to the cross. So he fulfilled these carnal ordinances that were given to the Jews and Jews only, brought it to an end, and the people are saying that he comes in to institute. Right. You know, do we even know the difference between start and finish? Really? You know, stop and go. Right. You know? So the thing is, institute means to start. Yeah. And institute's not even in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So he, we have to know what his mission was, and he comes in to fulfill these things. That's why he got physically water baptized with John's baptism. You know? So the thing is, he brought that to a desired end. And then he's bringing in a new testament which is now being written in the hearts and minds of man. Right. And that's why you get this big heart here. It was given to the Jews first, and then later on, seven years later, to the Gentiles. So we have to understand where we are in Yahweh's purpose. Now, the thing is, when we're reading here in 1 Corinthians, that was after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And those that believed Yahshua, they were told to wait in Jerusalem till they received power from on high. Right. right? So they were waiting in the upper room. And, you know, we, we can even understand when he ascended after his death. I'm sorry, again, I don't know if I'm not supposed to be walking around so much. Yeah, you're supposed to walk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, after his death, burial, resurrection, then we see that he made special, uh, spiritual appearances for some 40 days. 
okay? And then, then he, uh, uh, here it is, Acts uh, 1 and 9 through 12. See, I said user-friendly charts. <laughs> if you forget the scripture, you know, which some of us are forgetting things a little bit more than we used to when we first came around, it's right there on the chart, and it's beautiful. And the thing is, so he that's when he ascended, and there was two, uh, as I always say, two white men, two men in white apparel standing in, you know, and that's Acts, the first chapter. And the apostles were standing there looking as Joshua was being taken away as he ascended. And they said, they're asking him, and they said, why do you guys stand here, uh, you know, looking at, up at Yahshua? That same Yahshua, the way that he went away, he's going to come back in like manner. And that's what happened on the day of Pentecost, and the world has clean, clear missed this. Mm -hmm. So the things that were being taught in this school, they're precious. Yeah. Yes, Very precious. And it's like we didn't even know the date of it. It was yeah. May 26 when he ascended. Because ten days later was the day of Pentecost when they received the gift of the Holy Spirit in Acts the second chapter. So it's like he can understand these things. And those that believed, or you know what Yahshua said about wait to, in Jerusalem till you receive power from on high, they were up there in the upper room, 120 of them. And the thing is, there was 3,000, I think, added that day to the assembly. And it's like, you know, if we had a seminar... <laughs> with 3,000 new people, wow. Yeah. You know, and it's like, we think it's great if we get, you know, five or ten, you know, yeah. that's, a, that's a good one. There was one in Jamaica where they had 95 new people, mm -hmm. a little convention that they had, you know, way back when. Mm -hmm. But it's like 95 new people, like, right. man, you know. Yeah, so anyways, there was a 120 in the upper room waited, and they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then they went out preaching and teaching in the name of Yahshua and showed how Yahshua fulfilled that old covenant. And he, they're talking the resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. And a lot of them, they, they thought that their body, Yahshua's body was stolen away. Right. You know, they lied about it. And that lie continued into the, you know, way into this age and stuff, too. Right. And that's, I think it's the last chapter of Matthew or someplace mm -hmm. where it talks about you know, that deceiver said that he was going to resurrect, so they put somebody right. at the tomb, yeah. right. and they put that rock at the tomb and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. okay. Someplace. Yeah, they, and they had guards here, okay? Mm -hmm. And the tomb, they had a rock over the tomb. Right. And when Yahshua resurrected, and they went down to the tomb, why, you why are you looking for the living and where the, amongst the dead? Right. You know, Yahshua, that Yahshua was resurrected. Yeah. And they, these guys fell as dead men. You got the little picture right there. User friendly, like I said, <laughs> and uh, there's the rock. So Yahshua resurrected, and he didn't resurrect. He did not resurrect a physical body. Right. Right. He resurrected a quickening, quickening right. spirit or a life giving spirit. Right. That's right. And then those that uh, were, then, then their uh, sons that slept in the dust of the earth resurrected after him. Okay, yeah. he's the first resurrect one to resurrect, and then the uh, sons that resurrected with him also. Okay, so you see that Yahshua went through a death, a burial, and a resurrection. And that changed everything. This is a focal point of Yahweh's purpose. This is the Old Covenant. Then we got the New Covenant being ushered in. And we got the, the dispensations here and of time. Yahshua was right there, and that changed everything. It's a timeless reformation, as it says over in Hebrews, I think, the ninth chapter. And uh, so the Old Covenant was fulfilled. Yahshua went through his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, and then outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And the thing is, like, the scripture reading that we had, in like, you know, Dr. Ebler was talking about how he wanted to pick it up, because you don't like to pick up a scripture where it says, but, you know. And the thing is, when you're talking about that, Second Peter, first, we're, first I'll finish the uh, Corinthians. So he said, he beseeched us, brethren. All right. Uh, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior, that you speak all the same thing, uh -huh. and that there be no divisions among you, but that you, per you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Okay, so that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. And the thing is, there is no possible way for us to be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment unless, like it says in the second aim, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood mm -hmm. of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah. That's right. And some people, when they say the aim, they leave out that in Yahshua the Messiah. And that's the only way it's possible. Right. You know, we have a lot of differences. We have a lot of similarities. But the point is, the thing that really binds us and keeps us together is that we're forming that nucleus 
of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. So those are the kind of, the aims, if you listen to the aims, we say it every time, you know, it's right. like to help you. You know, some people say, well, you can't, there's nothing you can do. Well, somebody helped you when you came down. Right. And, you know, they're, all the aims have verbs and action, something, you know, to earnestly contend. Mm -hmm. Nothing you can do. I mean, to earnestly contend, I mean, just look up the definition of some of these words. Uh, to form a nucleus, to investigate the unexplained spirit law. You know, if you investigate something, you're doing something, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So I don't know exactly what people mean when they said there's nothing you can do. <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot of things you can do. To extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Current superstition. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, it's like, I mean, if you just read some of the transcripts of Dr. Kinley's lectures. I mean, talk about... You know, he wrote, some of those things are, you know, back in the 60s and mm -hmm. so on and so And I'm thinking, how did he know? <laughs> it's like up to date, going on now, yep. the things that, are, that he was talking about. Mm -hmm. And discern and avoid being deceived. You know, you just don't discern it. You've got to avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons. Operating the mystery of iniquity. He's operating, and he's open 24-7. You know, he's got a business going on down here also. So he's operating that mystery of iniquity. Um, to earnestly contend, I already said that, to make known that Yahweh, I mean, if we actually upheld the aims of this school, we wouldn't have the trouble that we're in. Yeah. And we'd be perfectly joined together in the same heart and in the same mind mm -hmm. if, we, if we all followed the, you know, and really understood what we're you know, partaking of. So the thing is that Yahweh from the, begin, from the beginning is like, and then you're going to come down here at this late date, and I see you have a little dotted line with a J here. This is when the letter J came into existence. This is when Yahshua was on the earth plane. So you got some 1,600 year difference. So the thing is, it's like uh, when he's talking, it's saying the aim is Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there was no other name given among men, whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And that's in Acts 4 and 12, which we always get also. And that's a must. And, you know, a must is an absolute. Yeah. It's not like, well, if you feel like changing it to Jesus or if you really want to change it to Kinley, nobody has that permission. Right. And if this is given through divine vision and revelation and we understand that, then you wouldn't be messing with it mm -hmm. and switching things around. I mean, most of us would confess that we didn't know anything about this, this kind, this things that we're learning down here prior to coming into this teaching. Right. You know, coming into the school. And so all the all all of a sudden down here at the end of the age we can start getting real, you know, bold and start you know messing things around and changing things up. You don't have that kind of permission. Right. And the thing is, so we know that his name, if you want salvation, it must be in the name of Yahshua. That's right. And uh, you know, like I said, for Acts four and twelve, also John, um, uh, John, fourteen and six, he says, "I am the way." The truth and the life. And if you have a red letter edition, it'll be in red letters. That's what Yahshua was saying to the disciples at this time. So it's like, and no man comes unto the Father but through Yahshua the Messiah. There's only one way. Uh -huh. And that's been established. And Yahweh from the beginning ordained these things. Yeah. Okay? So there's no other name given unto men whereby, whereby you can be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And it's like to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with a hope. We have a hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Mm -hmm. And our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth, right? right. And what does slogan mean? Anybody know? Yeah, it means to fight. To battle cry. Yep. Yeah, war cry, battle cry. Speak the truth. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we'll, you know, goof around with each other. Sometimes, you know, people will say something and it's like, hey, slogan, and that's all you got to say. You know, when somebody's, you know, using their imagination to, you know, come up with something, it's like, slow again, please, you know, because it's speak the truth. And it's like all the way down. And we couldn't do that prior to coming into this great teaching. So Yahshua is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father but through Yahshua the Messiah. And so that's why you can't be adding to and taking things away. Right. So, you know, if you didn't believe the vision at the end of this age, or didn't believe the vision, at, vision of revelation at the end of this age, or here with Yahshua, and how you wouldn't be waiting in the upper room, you wouldn't be added to the assembly, 
You know, so the thing is, you have to believe the vision of Revelation. And down here, Dr. Kinley claimed that he was the one, the, the man, the only man at the end of this age, that had a divine vision of Revelation directly from Yahweh Elohim. Now, he said, you make me prove it to your satisfaction. And that's what was going on in this school. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have charts up here. This is the vision drawn out. You know, and like people had said, I think it was at that 67 convention you were talking about, people, I want to have a vision in Revelation, just like Dr. Kinley. He said, help yourself. Right. And they, you know, and that's what we use these charts for. And they're not a backdrop. They should be used. And, and, and you know, keep in contact with it. And I've seen many lectures where they just stand there and talk. Yep. Right. And it is a backdrop. Yep. Mm -hmm. But these things, this, you know, this is a wit called a witness chart. And a lot of schools don't have this necessarily. But these things are all very important and it show, it's showing the threefold nature. It's all by this tabernacle pattern. You got law, prophets, and fulfillment. And it's like, I mean, these things are all witnesses. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. That's over in Hebrews, the 12th chapter. So it's like these things are all drawn out so that we can see something about our Creator. Just like this is the creation and it's all showing something about our Creator. Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim, and Yahshua. And then we got this tabernacle pattern and your physical body. And it's showing you how you're made in the image of Elohim by the pattern of the tabernacle. And it's amazing because a lot of the things of the physical body they had no knowledge of. This tabernacle pattern was given like we were talking about with Moses' vision. On top of Mount Sinai, Yahweh Elohim told him to make one exactly like it in the wilderness, that he, just like he's seen it in the vision, right? And they had no, not, you know, 3,500 years ago, they really didn't know a whole lot about the, human, the physical body, right. you know? Right. And, and it's relatively recently, mm -hmm. last couple hundred years, that they even, I mean, I think they discovered that the blood circulated by a guy named Harvey, I think his name was, in the 1600s or something. You know, so it's, you know, relatively recently. But if they understood the pattern, they had blood down here. And he had, on the Day of Atonement, when he went up into the Most Holy Place, he had to take the blood. Yes. And had, the blood was circulating in this tabernacle. And the man is made in the image of Elohim by the pattern of the tabernacle. So if you got blood in this tabernacle of man, you got blood in this tabernacle, the blood circulates here. So well, you know what? It's going to circulate in your physical body also. And that's how, you know, I was told I was made in the image of God. Yeah. You know, at church and stuff. But I'd be like, that was never, never, nobody ever explained why and how. Right. You know, you've got, the, you've got vessels here. you got this tabernacle of man. And then this is a broken down into the most holy place, holy place, court roundabout. And these vessels here correspond to the vessels in the tabernacle, in principle. And then you have a priest that operates in this tabernacle, just like you have the structure and the function of your physical body, mm -hmm. anatomy and physiology. And it's going by this tabernacle pattern. Right. It was given some 3,500 years ago, and that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And then this, pad, this chart here is a, uh, the pattern or plan of salvation. And it's showing the, the start to finish here with the circles on top, and it goes through that. And then we go into the... Uh, Adam and Eve in the garden, Noah in the flood that we talked about a little bit earlier. The children of Israel with their trek in, in the migration from Egypt into the wilderness, wandering around there, and then finally, eventually, into Canaan's land. This is a tabernacle pattern. You're going to see that on almost every chart. Mm -hmm. Then you got Yahshua and his ministry, how he was born flesh and blood body, because you got the principle of blood there, and you got you know he was water baptized because that's the next principle, blood. Bloodline, you're going to find there's blood here on the altar, right. blood on the door. And if they didn't have that blood on the door, mm -hmm. uh, on the when they did the Passover, the firstborn would be killed. Right. Noah warned the wicked, and see Ezekiel 33, 4 through 6, put the blood on their head or the responsibility on their head. Right. Back here, Adam and Eve, he had he uh, diso was disobedient. Eve was deceived, and she gave to her husband to eat of the fruit of the tree that they were not supposed to eat of. Right. And Michael and his, uh, Michael cast him out of the garden. The sun went down and Adam was like the son of Yahweh. Right. And he went down in the cool of the day. And that death that he had, or blood brought, uh, death and blood brought uh, upon all mankind. And that's why Yahshua had to come in and take us up out of that. Because right. uh, in Adam all died, but in Yahshua all are going to be made alive. Yeah. So we have that opportunity. It's like we didn't know that. In fact, I was baptized 
I was just thinking about this because I found, you know, when my parents died, they gave us all these little, when you did your baptism and your mm -hmm. first communion and all this, you know, important information that they kept, I guess. And I was baptized when I was 20 days old. And that was to take away original sin. Right. And my question is, if, if I had to have be baptized to take away original sin, what did Yahshua do on the cross? Right. I mean, he, he, would, he, he died that death. So in Adam all die, but in Yahshua all are going to be made alive. He took away the sin of the world. Right. And he took away that original sin. Yeah. The sin that was back here in the garden. So this is our only hope is through Yahshua the Messiah right. in his ministry. And that's what he died on the cross for. Right. And when the name was given by an angel, mm -hmm. just like the name Yahweh was given by an angel to Moses at the burning bush, and most people understand something about that story, or that event. It's like Yahshua's name was given to Joseph and Mary by an angel also. And it's like, you know, you're going to call his name Yahshua. They couldn't go through a baby book and pick the name out or anything like that. Right. It's like you're going to call his name Yahshua. And there's a reason why. For he shall save his people from their sins. Mm -hmm. So in the name Yahshua means Yahweh salvation. Okay, so he came in his father's name, the Yah portion, is the masculine part, and Shua being salvation or liberation. No other name has that meaning. Right. So his purpose is really locked up in his name. Mm -hmm. And that's what he died the death for, to come to save his people from their sins. And he was buried, and then he resurrected and ascended, and then outpouring of the Holy Spirit, like we were talking about. Mm -hmm. And it's all going by this tabernacle pattern, and it's all lining up all the events down through the Law and the Prophets. You can see the blood line. You can see the water line. You can see the spirit line. You can see the 40 line. You can line up. I mean, there's many principles. You got a bread line. You got light. You got intercession. You know, so the thing is all going by this tabernacle pattern. And it's all showing us what Yahshua came in to fulfill and how he's going to bring in or usher in a new and living way on this side of the cross after his death, burial, and resurrection, and outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So everything is changed through Joshua. Right. And that is the focal point. And then it happened to the Jews, and there was persecution, and then it happened seven years later to the Gentiles. And those that didn't believe, you know, look at what you got going on here. The apostasy, you know, or the turning away from a truth. And it's like, you know, they're, they're, these are Latter-day sects, creeds, cults, uh, vain philosophers, etc., you know, it says like false science. You know, all this different, you can, you know, vicar to the son of uh, Vicarius Filiae Diae. If you add up the Roman numerals, you know, it all comes out to 666. It's right there on the chart. You can even come up here and write it down. And there's scriptures that go along with it. So these things are, these are mysteries that have been, been hid for ages and for generations. And I'm not sure where that scripture is, but, but now they're being made manifest to his sons. So it's like we can see this. And what they're doing is they're restoring these carnal ordinances. And you got that mystery of iniquity, or Satan and his demons, dragging this stuff over on this side of the cross and start trying to set it up and make you believe that this is important to do. And the thing is, that's why it's called the dragon. Right. Because he's dragging it on over on this side of the cross. And the thing is, we got to understand what's going on. And he, now we can worship him in spirit and in truth, as it says over there in John uh, 4 and 23. And the thing is, I, I just, you know, we have the opportunity to know how to worship him. Right. In spirit and in truth. Yeah. And, that, you know, this, some of the things that we've been told our whole life, they're bogus. They're right. wrong. Right. They're wrong. And you can understand it through this divine vision and revelation given at the end of this age. Mm -hmm. So are we going to believe the report? And over there in Isaiah, I think it's 53rd chapter, it says, who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? And you can see that here in this one, in Mo this is Moses' vision. You got Yahweh Elohim, and he's, he's standing like this with his arms folded. Mm -hmm. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? Didn't it say that uh, they went up uh, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders, and they saw the Elohim of Israel? Mm -hmm. And there was under his foot a paved work of a sapphire stone. And he had the body of heaven in its clearness or brightness. And upon the children of Israel he laid not his hand. Right. Also they saw Elohim and did eat and drink. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's Matthew, or Exodus 24. I know I'm taking some liberties here. <laughs> and uh, 
But the point is, so he was, he had his arms, you know, he was wrapped up. It was all wrapped up. And then you see this at the end of uh, the five, John really on the uh, Isle of Patmos was seeing a panoramic vision of Elohim to John, okay? And the thing is, Moses wrote the first five books. John wrote the last five books really in chronological order. So it's like you, get, you can see that they both start to finish. It's all been always through vision and revelation. And I know when I first came in here, I thought, vision? What have I got myself into? Right. I mean, I never heard people about people having visions. But it was my stupidity, because that's how Yahweh's always dealt with mankind. Yes. Moses couldn't have wrote what he wrote, the first five books, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. He couldn't have right. wrote all that unless he had a vision and revelation. John wrote the, the last five books, and then you had the true prophets in Canaan's land, and it talks about holy men of Yahweh spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And that's right before the scripture reading that we had. And they had to see something. Yahweh, Yahweh had to show them what to write. So in, it wasn't Isaiah. It wasn't Jeremiah. There's holy men of Yahweh spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So it's been a vision and revelation from start to finish. Just because of my stupidity, I didn't know that. So I'm thinking, vision? I mean, who has a vision nowadays? Right. You know? So the thing is, that's what we learn. And, and the thing is, we've been taught wrong since the get-go. So we have a chart on the pattern or plan of salvation, all the events and down through the law and the prophets, because those are our witnesses down through the law and the testimony. And I didn't know what a law was. I didn't, you know, what law? Right. These are the first five books authored by Moses that we were just talking about. And the testimony, or the prophets, is from Joshua down to Malachi. Mm -hmm. In some places, they'll give you, the rip a Bible in half and give you good news for modern men. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, it's bad news, That's because you bad. don't have the witnesses, you know? Mm -hmm. So the thing is, it's like, he, we go to the law and the testimony, we can understand something. We go to the physical creation, Romans 1, 19 and 20, Psalms 19. The heavens declare the glory of Yahweh, the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, night unto night showeth knowledge. This is creation is really speaking to you. Yeah. I mean, I had a garden before I came into class, and I always liked plants and things like that. I didn't know what it was showing me. Right. I had no clue. Now when I plant a, you know, seeds in the ground, I'm like, I have great anticipation <laughs> that they're going to have. And I can see it. They're in a death-like state. You know, they hang out in my back room. My seeds, you know, they're not going to sprout or do anything. You take that something that is dead, you've got to bury it in the ground. You don't sit there and cry about it. No. You, know, you know what's going to happen. Right. You bank on a resurrection. Mm -hmm. And that seed is not going to come out a big seed. Mm -hmm. It goes through a change that's, right. that's dead, buried, and it resurrects a whole new plant. It brings forth more fruit and more seed. Just like Yahshua, when he died, he was buried in Joseph's new tomb. He didn't resurrect a phys big physical body. Mm -hmm. The same thing that went in. You, you, you know, a a mother, mother and father come together. That seed is put within the woman, mm -hmm. and that that which grows in her takes on shape and form, and it doesn't come out the same way it went in. What I like when it went in, okay, it comes up. It's a beautiful uh, little baby. Mm -hmm. it comes out a whole new creature. Anyways, and you got the same thing with the caterpillar. You know, it's dead and buried. It comes out. It's a caterpillar. It's earthbound. You know, and if you, you know, people kind of mock some of us that teach about the butterfly. Oh, you butterfly people. <laughs> you know, it's so beautiful. <laughs> I mean, it's like I loved butterflies before I came into class. Right. And now I understand that they're teaching the gospel. They're right. preaching the gospel. So it's like in a death-like state in, this, in, the, in the sense that it's earthbound. All it does is eat the flesh of the plant. Right. And if you ever watch them, man, they, they are line upon line. I mean, they're just eating machines, really. Right. And it's beautiful. And so, it, and then at a prescribed time, they go up and they form that chrysalis. And uh, what happens in, in that chrysalis, behind the veil of that, that chrysalis that's formed, it's like those attributes or that, that, that which went in there with the caterpillar, it says in, it's dissolved and rearranged. And then it comes out a glorified... Uh, Butterfly. Mm -hmm. And it's like it has to tarry, just like Yahshua had to tarry some 40 days here. That butterfly has to, you know, it just doesn't start flying straight away. It, the wings are warmed by the sun, that circulation. And it's like, and it doesn't eat the same thing that it eat, used to eat in the other way, right? right? When it was a caterpillar. 
And if somebody told you the caterpillar and the butterfly are the same, you'd say, oh, I don't believe that. You know, you're trying to kid me. And it's like, and it drinks nectar. It's like, this is where it reproduces also. It can't reproduce as a caterpillar. Right. So it reproduces. So it's showing you the death, burial, and resurrection. And it's glorified in the state. You know the seasons of the year, the death, it's buried. You either got winter or the snow that we get in back east, or you got rains in different places. But, you know, the, the fall is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, we used to live in West Virginia, and the hills and stuff were just beautiful there because they're just loaded with trees, and the colors is like a, incredible. You know, you got a lot of the reds and oranges and rusts and yellows and so on and so forth. And it's showing the beauty that Yahshua died on the cross for us. <clears throat> there is beauty in what he did and died that death that he died for each and every one of us. So you see, there's a death in the fall, burial in the winter, springtime comes around, and I know back east the little crocuses pop their heads right out of that snow. The resurrection could, takes place, right? And it's like, I mean, even like flowers and stuff and grasses come up through a concrete sometimes, you know? I mean, there's power in the resurrection. And then there's a glorification in the in all of this is really going on because it's really showing us something about what Yahshua did when he went through a death, burial, and resurrection. Everything breaks down into either the Adam or the cell. And all this is to show you something about Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. And the thing is, keep it the way he gave it to us. Because it's like you can't change the way a, the metamorphosis takes place. Mm -hmm. You can't change the seasons of the year. Even though I like I vote winters shouldn't be uh, out east anymore. Okay, so come here. <laughs> you know, so anyways, uh, the point is the things that we've been given, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, yep. lest at any time we let them slip. Right. And that's over in he Hebrews uh, 2, the second chapter. And um, I was thinking about this the other day, and Dr. Kinley used to quote that, Hebrews, the second chapter. Do you have that? Okay, read that. For Therefore, me. we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the <coughs> word spoken by angels was steadfast, okay. and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we <coughs> neglect so great salvation? And so how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? So we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we let them slip. And what he combined that with, and not just one lecture, but a, couple, a number of lectures that I read recently, is over there in Hebrews, the 12th chapter. I think it's 12 and 15, or 12 and, yeah, I think it's 15. And, and I used to think, you know, because Dr. Kinley, you know, he knew the Bible forward and backwards, you know. And he goes, it's up a little bit further, or it's down below, when he was reading Hebrews, the second chapter, about we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any let, time we'd let them slip. And then a root of bitterness. So he's combining it with something from the Hebrews 2 all the way over to Hebrews 12, and I think, is it 15? 12 and 15. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of Yahweh, lest any root of bitterness springing up defile you, and thereby many be defiled. And so that root of bitterness, if we let the thing slip, and you can see that it causes divisions and stuff, you know. There's great, you know, I never thought at the end of this age here that we're living in. We're down here at the end, right down here at the end of an age. And we really ought to be aware of where we are in Yahweh's purpose, you know. And we're down here at the end of the age, and it's like we're arguing about some things that we argued about in the when we first came into the class some 40 years ago, some of us. Right. You know, it's like I used to talk to the Christians. And they go, oh, it's not the name, it's the character. Yeah. The nature, yeah. And to me, I'm thinking, wait a minute. Are you kidding me? You ought to give the more earnest heed to the things that you have heard. You're going to come up with some other name for salvation? Yeah. Right. At the end of this age, mm -hmm. you're going to be changing things around? And really, I never thought that I would be arguing about the name. Right. right. <laughs> At the end of the age. Yeah. You know, I thought that was something, hey, pretty much understand that. Yahweh's salvation. Yahshua. Okay? It's the name of the whole family in heaven and earth is named by the name of Yahshua. Um, it's uh, the name not only in this age or in this, in this world. This is Ephesians 1 and 21, I think. 
but it's also in the, the name in the age. It's far above all principality and power, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the ages to come. Yeah. So it's like it's a key, and even in the ages to come. Right. Ephesians 1:21, and then Ephesians 3 and 14 talking about it's a family name, mm -hmm. the name of the heaven, all of uh, the fa whole family in heaven and earth is named. Mm -hmm. So it's not just something that we're talking about down here right. and trying to be cute at the end of this age. That's right. That's the name of salvation. If you you don't know the name, and you're gonna you're gonna be want, you're gonna be taking on the immortality, the body of immortality. The end of all flesh has come before Yahweh at the end of this age, and now we're gonna go back into in, 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 into immortality. Okay, we're gonna get a whole new body. We're not gonna be you know cumbered with the the physical body. You know, you break your shoulders, you do all the you know. I mean, it's it's terrible. You know, and it, and who thought we'd be this old? Right. You know? I mean, I never thought that when I first came into class. Yeah. You know, so you know, we were like, wow. So the thing is, it's like we ought to give them more earnest heed or that root of bitterness is going to spring up. And you can see that that's going on with some of us at the end of this age. There's a root of bitterness. And it's like, you know, you're, they're mad at you for preaching the truth. Now you can see that what Paul was talking about. I've be, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Right. You know, I think that's in Galatians or something. But so some of the things that are going on now here at the end of the age, I thought, I thought that, oh, that would be in the world. Right. And I remember sitting in my chair and listening to some of the lectures when the things started changing. Mm -hmm. Oh, they didn't mean that. I'd correct him in my chair. They'd go, oh, no, he, I'm sure he didn't mean that. He must have slipped. And then when they kept saying it, I'm thinking, did you actually mean to say this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I was shocked, yeah. you know. And it's, um, it's almost like um, erosion. It's like it happens over a period of time, and you don't really realize it. Right. It's going on, and then all of a sudden that like hill is like flattened out. It's gone, you know? It's like, wait a minute. And then he asks, what other thing? That's why we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have, had, have learned, lest at any time you let them slip. Right. And the whole thing with this is, uh, I just want to go to the scripture reading real quick and... Uh, I actually want to pick it up in the one before. And, yeah, uh, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Uh, no, go to, uh, mm, I think maybe nine. Try nine. But he who lacks these things is blind. So we'd have to figure out. Figure no, we're, uh, we don't follow cunningly devised fables. All right, hold on, hold on. All right that's 16. 16. Okay, I'm sorry. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. This is Second Peter 1 and 16. Okay. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables mm -hmm. when we made known to you the power and coming of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. So not, we're not down here following cunningly devised fables. We're down here, and the thing is, if you can't prove it, if it's not in the scriptures, Dr. Kinley said, the scriptures are a revelation from Yahweh, is what he said said, if it's not in the scriptures, it's not a revelation from Yahweh. Right. So, you know, to me, it's like you, you and I, I, I still believe that I can ask questions. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like, I ask questions now to some people, and they go, you're asking me a question? You know, it's like, what, you could ask questions? I heard it for the, since day one, coming into this teaching. It's like, after you've been here 10 years, you can't ask questions anymore? Or, you know, after somebody becomes a dean, you can't, you know, ask a question to them, you know, where did this start and stop? You know, you're encouraged to ask questions, and if you don't understand things, and even Dr. Kinley said, he goes, I don't appreciate you uh, agreeing with me unless it's a living reality within you, right. you know? So it's like he, he didn't want yes people. He right. wanted you to understand something, right. and this is a place you can know something for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is, he, he said, that, and the scriptures are the witnesses, you know, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, there's no light in them. Right. And we've been taught what the witnesses are. They go to the creation, like I said, Romans 1, 19 and 20 and Psalms 19. So the physical things are showing you something about spiritual things. Yahweh's, well, holy men of Yahweh spake as they are moved by the Holy Spirit. All the way down. There's only one author, and that's what we're going to get to. So we're not following cunningly devised fables, things put together. Right. Read, please. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Mm -hmm. For he received from Yahweh the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now, did you ever hear that? Yeah. 
And if you go to Matthew, the uh, 17th chapter, that's what he's talking about. Yep. There are eyewitnesses. So in, the, in Yahshua, that's Matthew 17, and they, had, they saw Moses and Elijah, or really John the Baptist. And there was Peter, James, and John, you know, his brother. They saw Yahshua transfigured before them, okay, in the mount. Then you got on this mount, you have Aaron, which was the elder, and then Nadab and Abihu, and then there were 70 elders, but you had the older and then the, and the brothers here. So they saw something, didn't they? We just talk, talked about that in Matthew 24. Right. They saw the body of Yahweh Elohim, mm -hmm. and they described it. And then T Peter starts talking about tabernacles. Right. Yeah. You know, where'd that come from? Exactly. And Peter, you know, he's always a little zealous, and well, let's yeah, make exactly. three of them, you know? So they're talking about, they saw tabernacles here, you know, or that tabernacle was talked about back here. So that's what they're talking about there. Read on a little bit further, Carl. Please. Uh, and this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mountain. Right. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Right. Whereunto you do well that you take heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Now day star arise in your heart. And the day star would be the sun. Yeah. You know, not the physical sun is going to arise in your heart, but Yahshua the Messiah, the true sun. And just like that physical sun keeps everything in check in the creation, you know. And if it's too close to the earth, you know, it could burn you up. Right. If it's just, you know, a few degrees, be, you know, backed up, it could make everything, you know, freeze. So it's a delicate balance, and this is what gives life to this physical earth plane. It, this is a type and shadow of the true sun, which is Yahshua the Messiah. And so that's the day star that's going to rise in your heart. Read. Knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. No, you know, this is one thing you got to know for sure first. Mm -hmm. The prophecy, uh, no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. And that's all you got out there is private interpretations. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you, you, it's <coughs> out there, we don't want it in here. Right. We don't need no private interpretations. We keep the thing the way it was given to us. So we ought to give the more... Uh, is that what it says? Knowing this first, yes, Knowing thank you. Yeah. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation, and there's a reason why. For the prophecy came not at any time by the will of man. Now the prophecy came not at any time or at all time by the will of men, read. But holy men of Yahweh spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So holy men of Yahweh spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, read. But there were false prophets also among the people. Now see, but there are false prophets among the people. Mm -hmm. Read. Even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies. So who privately shall bring, bring in damnable heresies. Right. And heresies is a false doctrine. Right. Damnable ones. Because your soul will be damned. If you, and it talks about, Dr. Kinley said at the end, uh, one of his last lectures, you know, it's like there's going to come a time and then th that these things are going to, you know, come in and creep in here, you know. Right. And um, he said he wasn't kicking about it. Right. He goes, but I want you to be prepared to reject it when it does happen. And this is what prepares us to reject it. Yeah. If we haven't, and they said if you hadn't learned your lessons, you might be carried away with this thing. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, so people think, well, why do I have to know all this? Well, the thing is, you have to know, understand, or you'll be carried away with something. Right. And that's one thing I thought we understood. Right. Was the name of salvation. Mm -hmm. Yahshua, Yahweh salvation. Mm -hmm. His whole purpose is locked right up in there. Right. And that's what we're having trouble with at the end of the age. Yeah. And how could we be duped? Okay? So it's coming in privately also. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know... Um, the scriptures are of no private interpretation right. that they talked in the chapter before. So it all goes together, and the thing is, we're seeing it down here at the end of the age. But we don't want to be, we got to give the more earnest heed to the things which you have heard, lest at any time we let them slip. Yeah. And the thing is, we don't want to let them slip now. Right. And we just want to hold on to the, the things that are true and you have proof for. And uh, I want to just get one other scripture at the uh, and uh, then I'll be down. There's a whole lot in that scripture reading and stuff like that, but uh, I took all my time up. <laughs> so I want to go over to um, Hebrew or Re Revelation. I think it's 17:14 or 14:17. 
We'll try 17.14 first. Yeah. Revelation 17.14. Uh, these shall make war with the Lamb. Okay, so yeah, we're talking about a war. And there's been a war from the very beginning, and we know that. You know, like in the angelic of Revelation 15, or 12th chapter. It talks about there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. Mm -hmm. You know, and I remember somebody was talking about it. There was a war in heaven. Why would you want to go to heaven if there's a war? Well, the key is there was a war in heaven. Mm -hmm. And it's really been the truth against the lie, all yeah. coming all the way on down. Yahweh gave him a commandment in the garden, and then Satan said, oh, you won't surely die. Mm -hmm. So it was like the truth against the lie. You know, their imagination of their hearts was only evil continually. So you got all this coming on down. And they said that they would be obedient to Yahweh. And, you know, within, what, 50 days they built a golden calf. Right. And that was one of the first commandments. Don't have any other idols before me. So it's like a truth against a lie coming all the way on down. So there's a war going on. And that's why I speak the truth is our battle cry or our war cry. Read. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is the El of Els, the King of Kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And the thing is, you're, we're in the Salvation Army. Yeah. You know? There's going to be a war. There's a war going on. Yeah. And some people say, oh, no, there's no war. I go, well, I don't want you in my platoon. You know? <laughs> you're out there with the, what do you call those things? Tank top and flip-flops. You know, we're, we should have the whole armor of Yahweh's, as states in the Ephesians, the sixth chapter. It's like we want to have that whole armor on. And if you go to, you know, where, where are you going to go if you have a whole armor on? Where are you going to go? You know, going down to Walmart to pick up something? No, you're in a, you're in a battle. And it says those who are with Yahshua in that battle, they're called. And it says many are called and few are chosen. And they're chosen... And then there's a third thing. It's always threefold by the tabernacle pattern. And faithful. And are we going to be found faithful? You know, so just hold, you know, hold on to the things that we've learned and so we don't want that root of bitterness creeping up. And all praise go to Yahshua Messiah, and I'm glad to see everybody. Praise Yahshua. Revelation 17, 14. Give it to Frank. Our next speaker will be... Um, also from the Springfield, Ohio branch, Dr. Frank Lewis. Good evening, brother. Good evening. I enjoyed the previous speaker. I thought, I mean, you know, we didn't come down here all these years to be stupid and be lied to and just stand up and say, okay, it's all right, since you're in here. Whoever you are, <laughs> we're going to follow you. Yeah. And, uh, and that's something we came into school. We didn't know that uh, there had been demons cast out and they were in you. Yeah. I mean, you understand? I mean, and that's the power of this teaching to cast demons out. Right. And so uh, as she was going over that, might as well talk about that a little bit too. And you know that that second Peter, the second chapter, it's the companion to Jude. They say the same thing almost. So it's the same Holy Spirit. Uh, mm -hmm. Just used a few different words saying the same thing. Yeah. And, uh, and like she was saying, the second uh, Peter, the second chapter. And see, what, and this is the thing that people, you know, you wouldn't believe what people say out there. I mean, uh, or in uh, IDMR. You know, they say, you still believe that stuff? You're still back in 1976? Well, you don't realize that it's the same age. Right. Same Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth. Mm -hmm. So does the truth change? No, and Dr. Kinley did say the revelation is progressive. Right. He said, but it don't change. Right. <laughs> you understand? It's progressive. You're going to grow. You're going to learn things. But you ain't going to get stupid and uh, say Kinley's your Heavenly Father and Savior when he was born September 30th, 1895. That's, that doesn't make any sense. Right. Uh, but that's following the mad. It's really church warmed over. Yeah. So, so they're, saying, they're here. He's right at the beginning of this age. And that's the one thing with Dr. Kinley's vision. 1931, he's teaching the same thing. He said, if I don't teach the same thing Moses and the prophets teach, I'm a liar. Right. He said, my job is to show everything Moses saw, John saw, and in between. But that's the way it is. It's the yeah. truth. You understand? Matter of fact, what kind of uh, shows the difference between the fifth and sixth dispensation, John's on the Isle of Patmos. 
all the apostles are dead yeah. except him. He's on a prison island. You understand? <laughs> Yahweh gives him the revelation. Who can explain it? It wasn't explained until Dr. Kidney had the divine vision revelation. When are you going to understand when you die and go to heaven? <laughs> and we didn't even know what heaven was. You know, that's another thing. We came in the, that's what this teaching does. Yeah. We came into class in hell, and that's the scripture lesson. And, we, and he, he was able to transform us and, and, and translate us into heaven. That's right. And that's why people don't understand what we teach here. Right. Because it's a heavenly name. Mm -hmm. So uh, the world don't see it. And people that came in the class, they got the vision and they taught the things off the charts. They preached the name. They were baptized in the name. But they could not have been baptized with the Holy Spirit to go out there and let somebody trick and fool you. Yeah. You understand? There's no way you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. You're going to change our life. Right. I mean, that's right. simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. We should. Oh, <clears throat> okay. Very so that. So, so we're in the sixth dispensation, and when he, he was given a vision and revelation, it's the same Holy Spirit. So when he dies in 76, we're still in the same age. Right. You understand? Age of grace, still the same Holy Spirit. Right. <laughs> if he changed, we'd be in trouble. That's right. You know, if things change. And like Dr. Kimley said, you can you say prayer changes things. You can pray as the sun's going. All seven billion, well, seven billion now, can pray that the sun's going to rise in the north. It's not going to happen right. Right. because there's a pattern. Yahweh don't change. Right. And you know what? The devil don't either. Mm -hmm. The devil's a liar, and he doesn't change. He's going to be lying. And you know he doesn't care what lie you believe, yeah. as long as you're believing one. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. And like today, today was Muhammad's birthday. And in Afghan, the guy blew himself up along with 43 other people, or maybe it's 42 plus him. Now that's a heck of a way to celebrate your, <laughs> your man's birthday, which you better not speak against, or they'll kill you for that. But we'll say this. Yahshua said this. He said in Matthew 20, well, you better do this. <clears throat> well, you might, don't have to do it, but <laughs> get Matthew 24. And uh, they asked him, what was the end of the world and the sign of your coming? Right. They go, they go, they go, matter of fact, read 24 and 1. Matthew 24 and 1. Here's his disciple. Read it. And Yahshua went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. They want to show him how great the temple is when he created the universe. <laughs> <laughs> so what is man's building going to do? Mm. Plus, he's the one that gave him the blueprint for the Solomon's temple, which was the, one of the greatest buildings ever built. Matter of fact, man's tried to, uh, tried to duplicate it, and that's why they get the big tall ones and whatever, whatever. But they sure don't have it made of solid, you know, gold, and with the walls and the floors of gold and precious stones pressed in it. That was a glorious structure because it's representing the resurrected body of Yahshua the Messiah. Right. And matter of fact, I just, I just, we just happened on it because it was given, Lejeune gave Valerie uh, her transcripts to put them in order. And there's one called uh, Weeping and Wailing and Gnashing of Teeth. It's only about six pages long. Yeah. And Dr. Kinley says, and, it, and that was what we were having read earlier about Yahshua and his glory that they saw up there. Right. And he says when Yahshua appears, he's going to make this sun look like a million thousand midnights. Make it darker than a million thousand midnights. Mm -hmm. That blew my mind. <laughs> it just shows you how great Yahshua Messiah is oh, yeah. and how that the natural sun's just a type. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about a great teaching, and that's why you don't mess with it. Yeah. Or, you know, or let somebody else yeah. mess with it. Yeah. And that's why we earnestly contend. Yeah, we do fight. Yep. You understand? I mean, that's the eighth thing to earnestly contend. Matter of fact, well, okay, well, we're doing Matthew 24, right? <laughs> so they're out there showing him the buildings. <laughs> oh, look at him. You understand? Mm -hmm. Read what he says. And Yahshua said to them, See you not all these things? And truly I say to you, there shall not be left one stone upon another 
that shall not be thrown down. And he, he said that what you're looking at, it's going to be torn down. It was by Titus in AD 70. So he's prophesying what's going to happen. But really, the tabernacle dissolved, and that temple was <laughs> torn down. You understand? Because they wanted the gold. Mm -hmm. And the reason it was torn down is because it's representing Yahshua's body. Because in Matthew uh, or John 2.19, he says, tear this temple down. He's talking about himself, even though he's in the temple. And in three days will I raise it up. Right. And it was a type of when Adam came down, because he was the, because your body's a temple, and he was the first son of Yahweh. And when he transgressed, he's driven out. And that's a death upon all mankind. And that's a death. Then the flood come. That's a burial. And the temple was dedicated exactly 3,000 years later. Three days. That's tear this temple down. And in three days I'll raise it up. And it's representing his glorified body. And see where people got this game about, uh, um, you were born a negative threefold entity. And then this got to be cast down now. And then you get a birth son. Well, the tabernacle stayed for 40 years here. It was 450 over there, and after a 490, those vessels that were in the tabernacle went into the temple. That's representing that your soul or inner man is going to be glorified. Do you understand? Right. See, it's not a switch out thing, just like she was talking about the uh, caterpillar. Right. It's not a switch out. There's something doesn't just, you don't throw out something and put something else in there. Nope. Same way with the baby or, <laughs> or the seed. Mm -hmm. You're not it's not the different substance. Yahweh, the power of Yahweh is able to take something that's dead and buried and resurrect it. Right. That's, right. that's his power. Yeah. And that's showing how you walked in this school, dead and buried. Right. We didn't know. John 17 and 3 said, this is life eternal. They might know that Yahweh is the only true Elohim and Yash Messiah that thou hast sent. We didn't know. And we had to come down to this school and uh, have the gospel being preached to us. Mm -hmm. That's how we learn what we learn. You didn't learn this somewhere else. That's right. And that's why when somebody messes with it, yeah, you have a fight on your hands. We don't just roll over and play dead. <laughs> you understand? I mean, I don't, we don't care who, <laughs> we don't care where you come from or how much money you got or how much big position or name. That's some crazy stuff. Matter of fact, one, well, I better not say that one. Well, I was going to say it, so I might as well. These are testimonies from the brother in Springfield. He said he called that place Lost Angels. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, that's Dr. Kinley saying that. And it came to pass. <laughs> There's a lot of lost angels in there. They even moved out there to be lost. Because it's false doctrine. We're not against the people. Okay. We're not against the Christians. We were there. Our families are there. You understand? Mm -hmm. But we are against the false doctrine that's taught to the people. Right. They don't realize it's the doctrine. We're not against people. Right. They have a soul that can be saved just like ours. You know, we ain't no different. You understand? Right. And that was the what and this is about eight transcripts where he talks about it. <clears throat> that he gave every, that John 1 and 9 said, he gave every man a sufficient amount of intelligence to comprehend the purpose of Yahweh. One of them says, right. you can use it and it'll save your soul. Mm -hmm. Another one, he says, when you're told the truth and you reject it, he says, Yahweh is justified in sending you to the lake. Right. And she just had another one I never even read today. It was in the car. And it's a, yeah. anyway, there's a lot of stuff. And the thing is, is that, uh, so John 17 3 said this is life eternal they might know that Yahweh is the only true Elohim and Yahshua Messiah thou hast sent so we're in a school and the school does teach knowledge mm -hmm. yeah. and I think that was in the scripture lesson matter of fact get that that was 2 Peter 2 and about 20 see mm -hmm. that's right we were on Matthew 24 too yeah. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of stuff happening read on <clears throat> 2 Peter 2 and 20. Yeah. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of... See, that's how they escape the pollutions of the world. The world's been polluted with false doctrine. Right. Right. And you escaped it with the knowledge. That's how we came in the school. We received the knowledge of something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then you want to some, let somebody uh, deny the knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't any good. It was all carnal. 
No, that's that false doctrine is carnal. <laughs> anyway, it's damnable doctrine. Yeah. Read on. Uh, you better get them too. For First Timothy they four one, the, Second Timothy three. But go ahead. For if they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of our Savior, yeah. Yahshua. See, that's there, the knowledge of Yahshua. That's, that's what the knowledge is about. It's about Him. Read. And they are again entangled therein. Yeah. And overcome. The latter and and what worst. overcame them must be demons. Mm -hmm. You understand? They're powerful. If they deceive one third of the angelic host, they're no, you're no problem for them. That's right. Mm -hmm. But that's the power of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Cast those demons out, and you can be a true recipient of the Holy Spirit. Re read, uh, okay. The uh, latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Yeah. Now. Now, what he just said there, he said, if you, you, you receive the knowledge, and he was talking about the brothers on this side, and then get entangled and messed up, your end is worse than the beginning. Well, that's the same thing that happened at Joshua's time. Mm -hmm. She was talking about it. Get that. Matthew uh, 27 and uh, 63. <clears throat> this is after they done killed him, and they're worried about him resurrecting, because he said, <laughs> just go ahead and read it. 2763. Yeah. Because Joshua preached his own gospel. He said he's going to die. He suffered many things. Die. And he's going to raise from the dead. Again, start the third day. Start at 52. Start at 62? No, no, just hold on with that one right now. You sure? Yeah, I'll tell you why in a minute. Because at 2750. Okay, read 2750. All right, uh, 2750. Yahshua, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the, the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yielded up the ghost. Okay, so here he's, here he's dead. Then read 57. When the even was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Yahshua's disciple. Mm -hmm. And he went to Pilate and begged the body of Yahshua. Yes, he ain't buried the body yet. So see, what happened is with Matthew, they got mixed. <laughs> there's a thing mixed up there where there's a great earthquake and he's resurrecting with the sons before his body's buried. Mm -hmm. It's kind of out of place, ain't it? Yeah. You understand? That's why I didn't get it at that time. We'll get it later, though, because <laughs> it is important. <laughs> so go ahead. Yeah. But, uh, okay, so 57 back. And so, and you know, that's a declaring the end for the beginning. A man named Joseph gave him his tomb because a man named Joseph, that was a womb that had never been, <laughs> no seed had ever been laid in. So he's declaring the end for the beginning. <clears throat> okay, read on. Uh, get to, yeah, please. Saying, sir, we remember what that deceiver said while he was yet alive. <laughs> now, these are the religious leaders. <laughs> And that's the creator in a body. Right. Yeah. So we had deceivers said, read. After three days, I will rise again. Yeah, I'm going to rise again. And the, you know the NIV version took the word again out. Because they don't understand right. anything about no again. Mm -hmm. They still looking for him to come back second time. Read. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, yeah. lest his disciples come by night and steal him away That's and right. say to the people, He is risen from the dead, so the last error shall be worse than the first. So you see, just like the, the last error was worse, the last state was worse than the first, and then that, it's the same thing was said there. And they said it. Our last error would be worse than the first. Well, well, when them, those watched, they had no reason to lie. And when that angel sto rolled the stone away, and Yahshua Messiah resurrected. And many resurrected after his resurrection. That's right. See, matter of fact, that's what we'll get to snap. We'll get to 27, 51, and 52. <clears throat> 27, 51, and 52. Yeah. Matthew. Mm -hmm. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. Now, see, when he was on the body. cross, the spirit rent this body. So the veil of the temple was written twain, and like what she was showing here. See, these are three ages in time, so this would be like court roundabout, holy place, most holy place. So when Yahshua was on the cross, that would be like it under the second veil. So the veil was written in twain from the top to bottom. There was a great earthquake when he was on the cross. But there was also a great earthquake when he resurrected. But people don't know about that. You know, a lot of times they don't put it all together. So here it's kind of mixed up in Matthew. But read on. And the rocks rent. The and rocks the, rent. And the graves were opened. Yeah. And many bodies of the sons 
who slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection. After his resurrection. That was on the third day, see. Mm -hmm. When that earthquake happened and he resurrected, and many a body slept and went into, you know, and resurrected after his resurrection. What's he fulfilling? The many bodies that come up out of the land of Egypt <laughs> on the third day. Because, see, this was like the seed of Abraham. It's a death, a burial, and then a resurrection with a whole group of people. Right. And then on the third day of creation, the, the earth is out form and void, darkness upon the face of the deep. But then uh, uh, the waters were still covered over on the second day. So that's a death, burial. And then until the third day, the waters roll back. Mm -hmm. And the seed of vegetation come forth. Herb yielding seed after his kind, tree yielding seed after his kind. See, the third day, plants come forth. They're representing on the third day, plants don't have flesh and blood. So it's showing you when Yahshua was not resurrected, it was not a flesh and blood body. And neither were those brothers that came out. You know, it says the bodies, which those were souls resurrected. Right. Yeah. How do you know that? Because when you go to Revelation 6 and 9, he says when he opened up the fifth seal, and that's like the fifth step of the pattern, which is the holy place, he said he saw souls under the altar. He didn't say he saw bodies. Mm -hmm. He saw souls under the altar saying, How long, O oh, holy and true, will you not avenge our blood? And they said, Until your fellow brother kill like you were. Uh, well, I know there's a lot there. Anyway, <laughs> keep reading it. So they resurrected after his resurrection, read. And came out of the graves after his resurrection uh -huh. and went into the holy city and appeared to many. And they went into the holy city and appeared unto many. That's Jerusalem. Okay? <clears throat> and that's what he's talking about in 1 Corinthians 15 and 5. It said 500 saw him at once. Mm -hmm. You understand? Now, the, the watch come to them. You better get that. Read 28 and 12. Uh, Matthew, Matthew, yeah. Matthew 28 and 12. He resurrected in 28. Read on. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money to the soldiers. Yeah, see, when they, the watch came and said, he resurrected. Mm -hmm. and they'd have no reason to lie. They're Gentiles. Right. You know, it's the Roman soldiers. And they, and they said, when they took counsel, they read. They gave them large sums of money. They gave them large sums of money. They paid them. Mm -hmm. Read. Saying, say you, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. <laughs> they stole him away while we were sleeping. Mm -hmm. And you know, you don't sleep when you're a soldier. <laughs> They'll kill you. You understand? And then they said, hey, if they come to us, we'll secure you. Right. We'll lie for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so it's all based upon a lie. Right. And I read a transcript of Dr. Kinley. He's talking about that's what the Apostle Paul was believing. That's why he was persecuted. Mm -hmm. Because... He, he, they're saying that he fulfilled the law, nailed to the cross, died, buried, resurrected, poured out the Holy Spirit. He said, no, they stole his body away. So he's out there getting letters to kill the guys that are preaching that he resurrected. You understand? But when Yahshua appeared to him, eh, couldn't tell him any he hadn't resurrected because <laughs> he appeared to him. You understand? <clears throat> and he also used the last lecture and said this. Yeah. They said they stole his body away. And he said, that's still commonly reported. He said, uh, you see anybody ever steal the sun out of the sky? <laughs> too hot to handle, too far, and too big. <laughs> you understand? You'll die before you can do something like that. I mean, you never going to go 93 million miles in the first place. <laughs> so you don't even think that that's the natural type of the true sun. So that's why he didn't steal his body away. Because you can't even do the natural type. It's impossible to do natural. Plus... The sun ain't really gone nowhere. See, they say sun gone, it's coming back. No, it's shining its light on the other side of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, they measure how close it is. So, it, so if the physical one hadn't gone away, mm -hmm. it's yep. just that it's been hidden to you. Mm -hmm. See, like it's dark on this side of the world. It's the, it's the earth that's blocking, <laughs> blocking your sight of the sun. Which is, re rep which is representative of the flesh. It could be fleshly body or fleshly concepts. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't see it. Mm -hmm. And that's what this teaching does. And you probably saw the brother one time in a convention. He said, close your eyes. Mm -hmm. And he said, you see anything? Yeah. The flesh is in the way. <laughs> so you got to get the flesh out of the way so you can see something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, we're still back in Matthew 24. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But 500 saw him at once. So when you get that many witnesses, those boys, wasn't there, they wasn't running their mouth that day. 
You understand? They was the Sanger Council was in there trying to devise a lie, and that's what they did. They paid them money. And so you see how the money thing? They were paid money to lie. And that still goes on today. You think God would say, that's enough money, we don't need none. But they don't. Every Sunday, <laughs> they're taking up money. And they used to say there wasn't no you, and they wanted your money out there. <clears throat> Send it to headquarters. Go ahead. Now, did you just find 24-3? Uh, yes, please. Okay. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. It's really hindquarters. You know what comes out of hindquarters? <laughs> anyway, read on. And as he Joshua said, Messiah's headquarters. Truly. <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> But anyway, read on. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, mm -hmm. the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And of the end of the world. That's what he asked. And this is his answer. And Yahshua answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. Mm -hmm. See, <clears throat> and that's what... You, Read Second uh, Thessalonians two and three. We went to a school in Michigan, uh, Terry Welch and myself, and uh, that's the scripture they put on us was Second Corinthians. I mean Second Thessalonians two, because you know you're coming there. They know you don't believe what they believe, so they're gonna put say, hey, y'all, these are false prophets coming in here. <laughs> don't let them deceive you by any means. So we ran deception for them. <laughs> So you read Matthew 24 and 4, take heed that no man deceive you by any means. That's what he called the end of the age. And you think, hey, he didn't answer a question. Yes, he did. Yeah. That's what you're looking for, is no man deceive you. Mm -hmm. Now read 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. Let no man deceive you by any means. No, don't care what kind of means. Don't let him deceive you. Right. That's, right. That's the Holy Spirit in this age. So if it's the same Holy Spirit saying it, yeah. then that's what, it's up to date. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're in the same age. You're still in the day of eternity. <laughs> you know, time abides with eternity, not eternity in time. Okay, get to, oh, read this one. So then what we called was, we called 2 John 7. That's the next thing I called after I used those two. <clears throat> And I thought I was going to be kind of easy on them that day. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to cause a whole lot of stuff with them. Right. But this is what happened. Second John 7. Second John 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Yahshua the Messiah... She read Dr. Kinley. Many deceivers are gone in the world and confess not that Dr. Kinley is come in the flesh. Right. And that book, you know, I wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> and then I said, of is that what your Bible says? And she kind of looked sheepishly at me. <laughs> and I said, read it the right way. And then I kind of got wild. Because that's kind of crazy. And one reason why it's crazy yeah. is because John's writing that. He don't even know if there be a Dr. Kinley. <laughs> so he sure ain't saying me, deceivers are saying that uh, they confess not that Dr. Kinley has come in the flesh. Oh, you know why? Read 1 John 2.22. This is right before 2 John 7. And then just go back and read 7. Who is a liar. Who is a liar? But he that denieth Yahshua is the Messiah. <laughs> Who is a liar but he that denieth Yahshua is the Messiah? Read he is anti-Messiah. He's an anti-Messiah? That denieth the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son. Mm -hmm. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Yeah. So you're an anti-Messiah denying Yahshua Messiah and saying something else. Yeah. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. And we're in the same age. Mm -hmm. You understand? We're not. That's why we don't teach nothing different. Yeah. See, so what's the problem? Okay, go back to 2 John 7 just to finish it up there. 2 John 7, okay. And that's what is written here, too. Except the 7's not there. Matthew 24, 14 and 15 is there. And Revelation 14 and 6. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. No, it doesn't say it. It says, I saw an angel flying in the midst of heaven having an everlasting gospel. Right. What is everlasting stop? 
He doesn't. <laughs> you know, and so for them to say, oh, you still preach the gospel? Yes. <laughs> you still believe what Dr. Gill? Yes. Yeah. You understand why? It's the truth. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So then, oh, you're still. Like, like there's a first grade truth and a second grade and a third grade. It's still the truth. Mm. You understand? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> See, it is, it is a heavenly name. So then if you're carnal minded, you don't receive it. Yeah. The heavenly gospel, carnal mind, you're not going to receive it. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit's from heaven. The Holy Spirit is in heaven. Right. <laughs> That's why you don't understand it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Keep reading. Uh, for many deceivers are entered into the world yeah. who confess not. And he said them. many at the beginning age. <laughs> That's the beginning age. What are you thinking is down here? Mm -hmm. Many more. Read. Who confess not that Yahshua is come in the flesh. That Yahshua is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an anti-Messiah. And you know that's really what all of us were taught before we come into the school. You're taught Jesus is coming, so you're not confessing that Yahshua Messiah is coming to flesh. Mm -hmm. right. And even if you eat the Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. See, he said as often as you eat this, in 1 Corinthians uh, 11, 26, as often you eat this, you show forth my death till I come. Mm -hmm. So if you're eating it, you're saying he hadn't come yet. Right. <laughs> you understand? Yep. Yep. And then in 1 John, the fourth chapter, he says, Beloved, leave not every spirit. <laughs> But try the spirits where they be of Yahweh. Every spirit that confesses that Yahshua's eye is come in the flesh. Right. Not gonna. Mm -hmm. It's of Yahweh. And every spirit that confesses not that Yahshua's eye is come. So you can say, and say, Jesus is here and then eat the Lord's Supper. Well, you're confessing he's not come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand? Because as often as you eat this, you show forth my death till I come. Well, he's talking to him. Mm -hmm. Then he dies the next day. Then he's buried. If you're still eating it, you got him buried. You said he didn't come. You said he didn't resurrect. I got that from a Dr. Kimmy lecture. That guy knew what he was talking about. Yeah. And then tarried 40 days, then ascended, and he came back 10 days later, as the previous speaker said. June 6th. We never knew nothing like that. Right. They're still going to say Merry Christmas and talk about Santa Claus. I mean, you talk about lying. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows Santa Claus is a lie. Yeah. But they keep lying. <laughs> <laughs> After Thanksgiving, they're going to have Santa Claus at the mall. Yep. And they're going to have him at a bunch of malls. Yeah. <laughs> and he can't even do what they call San Diego County in one night. Much less the entire world. I mean, it's just, mm, it's terrible to be lied like they have been. Yeah. But those what demons do. That's what their job is. That's what Yahshua Messiah said. He told them in John 8, 44, he says, you're your father the devil. Mm -hmm. And the lust of flesh that you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. See, that murder started back in the angelic realm. Mm. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> Might as well start that. Get Revelation 12 and 1. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm. You just never know what to talk about. But he'll tell you what to say. <clears throat> Read on. Revelation 12 and 1. Mm -hmm. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. See, a woman was clothed with the sun. Right. See, and you got a natural type. Adam was clothed. <laughs> and the woman was in, she was clothed with the sun because she was in it. Right. See, and that's the same way it was in the angelic realm. I mean, but one thing he would say, if you ever look at the future existence of man, Dr. Kinley showed that uh, this ain't no hollow body. <laughs> Just like this one has angels inside of it. That was a woman clothed in the sun in the angelic realm. Read on. And you see it here on the chart, of course. See, after his death, burial, resurrection, there's the woman, and he pours out the Holy Spirit. There's a woman clothed with the sun. Right. That's what this is. And then this, that's what this is. And then you see the dragon persecuting the woman yeah. clothed with the sun. Why are they persecuting? See, in John 10, 34, it said, uh, uh, I didn't come to send peace on earth, but a sword. Yeah. And it says, and I'm going to uh, put the division between father and son and mother and daughter. And, you know, you say, what's that about? Well, when he pours out the Holy Spirit... 
if you're carnal minded, that's going to be division against those that are spiritual minded. That's really what that's the, what the persecution was about. Mm -hmm. They don't have the Holy Spirit, and the ones that do, that's why. But anyway, that's why you had Ishmael mess with Isaac, because mm -hmm. Isaac was a type. Right. You understand? <clears throat> okay, keep reading, please. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared. Oh, another thing. Another thing, go back to one again, just, just to show this part. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. Clothed with the sun. And the moon under her feet. And Dr. Kennedy said, that's a long-legged woman, moon under her feet and clothed with the sun. <laughs> if you look at a physical standpoint. <laughs> but it's showing that after Yahshua Messiah fulfills those things and dies, buries, resurrects, ascends, and pours out the Holy Spirit, the law, they're no longer under the law. So that's why the law is under their feet. See, on, on this chart, you... Well, <laughs> Usually says that. Some charts are different. But most charts have the moon right over his head. Because when they saw Yahweh Elohim, they were under the law. The moon's representing the law. You can check it out. Read on. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth. And so they were under the law back here, of course. Because they said, all Yahweh said, well, we do and be obedient. Gave him 613 laws and words. But after he fulfills it, nails to the cross, and dies, buried, resurrects, and pours out all his spirit, the moon's under her feet. The law, no longer under the law. There, she's under the law of the spirit of life. <laughs> I'm clothed with him, Yahshua Messiah. Read. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Mm -hmm. Behold, a great red dragon. A great red dragon. Mm -hmm. Read. Having seven heads and ten horns. Seven heads and ten horns. He, see where, where he had Yahshua Messiah or Yahweh and stand in the midst of a seven branch lamb stand? <clears throat> See, he was in the fourth age when he had that revelation. We're in the fourth age now. That's in the midst because you had three ages before and three ages after. Mm -hmm. Even when he comes as Yahshua Messiah, there's three dispensations before and there's three after. That's showing he's in the midst. So if he's the one enlightening the seven dispensations and the seven ages, what's the devil going to be doing? He's going to be lying all seven days and seven, you know, whatever ages he's in. Yahweh allows him to last. Read on. Because he ain't going to be in the next age. Having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. Yeah. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. So that's a lie he told drew one third part. How do you know that? Because you got the prophets for that. That's what uh, Isaiah 9.15 says. I'll just tell you. <laughs> so the angel and honorable, he's the head. But the prophet that teacheth lies, he's the tail. Right. So, it's, so that tail is a lie. Right. And then that's what happened in school. Everybody was given Jesus, and all Jesus is, or J is, is the letter I with a tail on it. And it wasn't until this teaching that we learned that it couldn't have been a letter J in the Savior's name. Right. Because there's no J in Hebrew, and the J is only 400 years old, impossible to be Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now that's simple. Anybody could do that research if, they, if it was put on their mind. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Read on. And, his tail and I read a transcript where Dr. Kinley said this. If you don't research that, Yahweh will send you a strong delusion thinking you can be saved in Jesus. And that's really what happens with his teaching. When you reject it, he sends you a strong delusion thinking what you're believing is true. When it's a lie. I mean, you know, we look at this we say, we can't believe they're saying Dr. Kinley's our Heavenly Father and Savior. I mean, that is crazy. Mm -hmm. But that's a delusion. And when you, he gives you that, you're done. Yep. So you're blessed if you don't, uh, if you, well, <clears throat> okay, there's, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot running here. <laughs> Read 24 and 5, though, of Matthew. <clears throat> uh, Matthew. No, no, you better finish up there, 7, Revelation 20, 12 and 7. Okay, Revelation 12 and 7. There was war in heaven. Yeah. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought, and his angels. That's right. So there was a war. And prevailed not. Yeah. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. They lost their place. And that's really one part of the purpose. That's the purpose for mankind having a soul. He's saving the souls to take place of those that lost their place or were cast out never to return. That's in the future existence of man. Mm -hmm. Lecture. <clears throat> Read on. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. That old serpent. What old serpent? Same one to see D. See, see, he, he, he already deceived one-third angelic host. 
That's why he had to deceive in the natural. Because it was already done in the spirit. You understand? And where are those demons? <laughs> like Dr. Kinley said, they ain't angels no more. They've been demoted. They're now demons. Read on. That old serpent called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He deceives the whole world. Not just part of it. That's why we were all included. We can't make ourselves better than somebody else. We were all wrong. Read. And he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with That's him. That's right. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know. You would never think. I mean, I mean, like I say, he don't care what lie. You would never think to go find out a demon would be up in a pulpit teaching to you. Mm -hmm. about God. You wouldn't think that was a demon. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, let's read and find out about it. Get, for, <laughs> get, get 1 Timothy 4 and 1 and 2 Timothy 3rd chapter. And these are like some of the things he did in the last lecture, along with that one she was talking about. We ought to take the more earnest heed to the things which are. Let any time we let them slip unless the root of bitterness spring up. Yeah. And you've seen them get bitter, boy. Matter of fact, it was, when that doctrine changed, there was people that you knew all your lives. They didn't even want to. They didn't want to have nothing to do to you. They look around. They wouldn't. <laughs> no dealings. Oh yeah. Read. First Timothy four. How you change like that? Now, when it says in First John three and fourteen, how you know you passed from death into life because you loved a brother. I didn't know love was that cold. It's not. <laughs> Matter of fact, do this. <laughs> I know there's a lot of stuff happening here. <laughs> So what do you want? Uh, Matthew 24 and 5. I'm going back to Matthew there. And, and this is one of the reasons. Because they say, uh, it's not the name. It's the character. Okay, I got this one for you. I got a few other ones for you, but I'll just use this one this time. Matthew 24, 5. Yeah. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, now, and shall deceive many. Now, is many going to come in his character and deceive? See, I thought the name meant character. Right. No, he ain't going to come in the name of Yah. Yeah. But people do come in the name of Yahshua and deceive. They do, they do that. And many are, but he's not going to come in his character and deceive many. <laughs> because he's the spirit of truth. This truth is not deceiving you. You understand? Right. So, that, so it is the character and the name. But the character is the truth. And knowledge. And understanding. Right. And so when you're not, when you're teaching stupidness and lies, that's not the character. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Simple. Mm -hmm. You can be stupid and see that. Anyway, <laughs> read the ninth verse. 24-9. Oh, 24-9. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And did you think you'd be hated for Yahshua? And that's what he told his disciples. They were hated. They were killed mm -hmm. for preaching Yahshua in the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Keep, keep the 11th verse. Uh, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Yeah, many false prophets shall rise. Now he's, talk, he's talking in this age, in this dispensation. He's right here. And he says, many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. We're in the age that they've risen and deceived many. Right. Read. And because in the You know, age, one and a half billion Muslims and two billion Christians. And any other ones that are deceiving. Read. And because iniquity shall abound. Now that's really what's happened. Because iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. We all one time were speaking the same thing and there was love. But it's wax cold. Right. <laughs> Read. But he that shall endure unto the end. But the whole point is endure to the end. Keep believing. The, if, there's, if you know it's true, you hold on to it. But if you uh, find out that it's not true, let go. <laughs> let go. Especially if it's proven to you. Yeah. See, don't be a bastard. If somebody uses the scriptures... And proves that what you're believing is wrong. And Dr. Kinley said that. He said, uh, he said uh, if you're born in the spirit, you don't know everything. Right. You can be wrong about something. Mm -hmm. And when somebody uh, corrects you in the scriptures and you receive the correction, you grow in grace. And I think that's a cool, I mean, I, I like that. <laughs> he knew what he was talking about. That guy was great. Those lectures are still like gold. Yep. And because the Holy Spirit is timeless. You can't, it ain't like 
that was a 1976 Holy Spirit, right. or 74, or 72, or 68. It's the truth. Right. Matter of fact, he said he was afraid not to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why? Because he have a killing coming. All lives are going to have a part of like a fire. That's why it's a serious thing to be a minister. You better make sure you're telling the truth. Read, please. But he that shall endure to the end. And Dr. Killing said, there's one thing we don't know nothing about. You know what that is? Yeah. Learn about Yahweh without a physical body. Because <laughs> that's all we've ever done so far, is learn about him with a physical body. But that's what the next age is. Right. He's got three ages to come. That's right. Read. The same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. Yeah. That's right. This gospel, the teaching that you've been taught here, how the Yahshua Messiah died, buried, resurrected, sent and poured out the Holy Spirit in the true name. That's right. See, because Mark 16, 15, he said, go into all the world. That's right before he sins. Preach the gospel to every creature. Them that believe and are baptized. That means baptized with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Them that believe not shall be damned. Serious. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall you cast out demons. It's the preaching of the gospel in the name of Yahshua. That's the power to cast out demons. And you shall speak with other tongues. Or new tongues. And that's what happened. We wasn't speaking like this before we come in. I didn't even have a Bible. Didn't even know what was in the Bible. It's by sitting down in school and learning. And then checking it out. See, first, uh, you know, he told the... He said the Bereans were more noble than Thessalonica right. in Acts 17.10. Dr. Kelly would bring that out. Right. He'd say, he said, because they received the word with all readiness of mind. When you come to class, you're wanting to know something. Because right. eternal life says no. <laughs> and then it says, and they searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. They checked it out. They didn't just say, okay, yeah, you're a good guy. I know you wouldn't lie to me. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? If he said it, it must be true. Yep. And that's what happened. They gained trust of people. Then all of a sudden, they got to switch. And people thought, well, you ain't going to lie to me yet. Anyway, come on. And I've seen it. You know, I, anyway, I was in the school where that stuff happened. And you don't believe that? You don't believe what they say? You're the devil. And that's the same thing happening out there. Yep. As a matter of fact, he used to say this too. Anybody that ever go against me, they die first. And that's why I told that guy in Ohio, well, that prophecy didn't come to pass. Anyway, read on. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end and come. And the end's going to come. Okay. Lawyers. <laughs> well, you know, there is so much this teaching. You ain't going to be able to tell it off. Okay, we was at the... Uh, First Timothy. Yeah. So it's three things. <laughs> probably four things. <laughs> What, the first Timothy 4 and 1, the yeah. second Timothy 3, the scripture lesson, and then Jude. Try to get that together if we can. First Timothy 4 and 1. Yeah. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Now that's in the day. That Spirit speaks expressly, directly. That's in this age we live in. It's the Holy Spirit speaking. He's going to teach you all things, bring all things back. And it's going to come in the name of Yahshua. Read. That in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Giving heed to so the Holy spirits. Spirit's prophesying that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. They're persuading you to think something else. Mm -hmm. Those are demons. Read. And doctrines of demons. And doctrines of demons. And he, and you know, you got, <laughs> he used to say, water baptism is a doctrine of a demon. Right. Lord's suppers. Um, preaching Jesus is your Savior. That's a doctrine of demon. Preaching Kenley. Preaching threefold negative endings. These are all <clears throat> doctrines of demons. It's not the truth. To say that your soul, you're, you were made in the image and likeness of the Creator, spirit, soul, body. And to say your soul was really a demon angel, and you need to exchange and cast that out, and you get a birth son. When you go, I, I call that BS doctrine. Birth son. They don't laugh when you say that. <laughs> but most of the time when you say it in some other place, don't laugh because it is. BS doctor bursts up. You do, be, you do be born again and you do become a son. Yeah, that's right. But it ain't no birth son. You get the, you got to, because that angel coming from his loins, what's being saved? He never done nothing. He was already in the body. Right. So it's a doctrine of demons. Right. 
read speaking lies in hypocrisy. And y'all read a transcript. You know how to explain that one? He said them demons was cast out. They were in heaven and they're lying to you so you won't <laughs> receive that kingdom or go back, go back to where they were cast out. You would never read that and see that. I even told him. I said, uh, can you progress over that one? No. <laughs> you would never think speaking lies and hypocrisies is that. Read on. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Yeah, they're seared, not sealed. Read. Forbidding to marry. Yeah, they don't want you to marry Yahshua the Messiah. And they say it ain't no use or you're marrying yourself. You say I'm going to go and marry myself down at the courthouse. <laughs> <laughs> Forbidden to marry. You know, Roman Catholic churches do that, but they're doing it spiritually. Mm -hmm. Okay, better go to 2 Timothy 3. <clears throat> 2 Timothy 3, 1. Mm -hmm. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. <laughs> hey, can you get any last days of where we're at? See how he's, he's in the same age prophesying what's in the last days perilous times shall come. You don't get much more perilous than what's going on around here. Mm -hmm. Read. For men shall be lovers of their own self. Oh boy. <laughs> now, that wouldn't be our president. Read. Co uh, covetous. And Most people aren't lovers of their own selves. You don't care about any soul of nobody. They just go, want you to look up to them. Read. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. And unthankful. he called the parents the law of the prophets. So when you, when you badmouth them, right. you're disobedient to parents. And see, that's really where we are. If you look at us, you look at stages of development. Dispensationalized, you have seed, embryo, babe, infant, child, adolescent, adult. So dispensationalized, we're in the adolescent stage. Adolescents, they get as big as their parents. Uh, Want to badmouth their parents. They're stupid. You understand? They ain't got no job. They ain't got no wisdom. <laughs> Don't know nothing, hardly. But they're as big as their parents, and they can reproduce. Mm -hmm. But if they make it through there, if we make it through this dispensation, through Yahshua and Messiah, you're going to get a more fortified body. It's nothing worth losing your soul over. But if you look at age-wise where you are, seen, embryo, babe, infant, you're a two-year-old in the purpose, age-wise. How much does a two-year-old know compared to their parents? Pretty close to nothing. Right. <laughs> so we can't get exalted and act like we're so smart. we got three ages to come. Mm -hmm. But what we have with is precious, yeah. and we hold on to it, That's right. and we're going to earnestly contend about it, all right, get that. Get June 3 now. So you can't read everything. But it says in 5 there, well, what does it say? 5 says having a form, that was 2 Timothy 3 and 5, says having a form of worship but denying the power thereof. People are denying the power of the gospel yep. right. of salvation. You understand? He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Messiah for it's the power of Yahweh unto salvation. He also said people think preaching is stupid. But he said, it's by the foolish of preaching that pleases Yahweh to save them that believe. That right. it means something. Right. Yeah. 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 It meant something to us. How'd you learn it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Staying home? Yeah. <laughs> no, you came to school. Right. Now, he does reveal things, though. Mm -hmm. But it was because, anyway. <laughs> I can't, you know, you can't tell it all. <laughs> then the seventh verse says, says they have ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Some such turn away. Okay, go to Jude, uh, Jude 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write to you of the common Is that the third verse? Is that third verse? Yes. Thank you. So, beloved, and you know, most time before that, if you was in the Christian church, see, see church, we're the beloved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't talking to you. talking about somebody got the Holy Spirit. It's in the school. Read uh, write unto you the common salvation. It's a common salvation. Ain't no exclusive of other people. Read. It was needful for me to write to you yeah. to exhort you that you should earnestly contend. Earnestly contend. There's a war there. We're going to fight about it. Read. Why? Because there was a war here. And ever since he was cast out, ain't there been wars? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joshua fought all the way. Had to fight down here, had to fight here, and fought over there. You're going to fight all the way. Same Holy Spirit. Read. You should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the sons. Yeah. For there are certain men crept in unawares. That's the problem. <laughs> Demons creep in unawares, changing the grace 
of our Savior into the city and denying Yahshua the Messiah that brought it. Right. Okay, and that same thing was in that second Tim, uh, the scripture lesson. It said, the damned old heresies, it said, they'll follow their pernicious ways. By the way, the way of truth is evil spoken of. So right. when you tell the truth, it's evil spoken of. And, and so it's up to date, even though it was said 1,900 years ago by the Holy Spirit. Right. And then he says, for Yahweh spared not the angel to sin, but cast them down to hell. Right. And we didn't know that them demons, uh, he taught that. The demons, he was casting demons out of man that was showing they was in hell. Yeah. And they was in us, and by the preaching of the gospel, yeah. they were cast out. And like Ephesians 1.13 says, in whom else you trusted? After that, you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. After you believed. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. There is a process. Yeah. And that's how you receive the Holy Spirit. Right. Not another way. Not just, well, oh, this this way. Mm -mm. So, uh, I know that was a lot. Hopefully you got something. <laughs> All praise go to God. We haven't thrown a Oh, Yeah, I'm going I'd like to thank everyone who came out and studied with us this evening, especially our guests uh, from Springfield. Um, we hold classes here every Tuesday and Saturday from 7, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, please stand for the doxology, which is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude out of the Holy Name Bible. <clears throat> now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever, let us all say. Amen.